Well, the rumours are true. Dark Souls 1 is getting a remaster. Isn't that cool? Now this also means that I can make yet another video about me speculating wildly about things that are never going to happen. Because, well... I just think they're neat. For this video, we can assume that the entire game's in the Dark Souls 3 graphics engine, so it'll, have, it'll at least have the same graphics as Dark Souls 3 or Bloodborne, but with the art direction of Dark Souls 1, so it won't just all be the one fucking shade of brown. And that's really the only prerequisite blanket change I want to make in this list. That way, you know, we can actually have a list, because technically I could sum up every change that should be made to Dark Souls 1 with make game better, and uh, yes, it can be made better, it's not totally flawless. In fact, given that this list had some help from you guys, so I suppose you could say this list is uh, scientific to an extent, it actually really showed how poorly a lot of things about Dark Souls 1 have aged. So, this is probably the last perspective I can have on the improving slash critique of Dark Souls 1. And yes, I understand this is somewhat similar to other videos that I've made, but the difference here is that the perfect Dark Souls game series that you should definitely watch if you enjoyed this is a totally unrealistic expectation of a game with ideas that don't even exist yet. The video on the 10 worst things about Dark Souls 1 was only dealing with Dark Souls 1 in a vacuum and didn't include things about the game that later games improved on. It was only about issues that we had about the game when it was released with no other games as a reference point. Plus, also it didn't suggest any changes. This list is dealing with, I suppose, the potential best Dark Souls 1 remaster we could have in 2018, going off everything that FromSoft has already done in all five games. And hence, it's somewhat realistic to assume that they could have applied some of these changes. And yet, right, the list is just for fun as well. So, the list is realistic changes that can be made to the Dark Souls 1 remaster, nay, should be made. The actual purpose of this list is to highlight the fact that Dark Souls 1 isn't actually perfect and to let our hearts weep at the fact that we'll never ever ever get to play this game. Also, please, will somebody hire me as a game designer already? Come on! Alright, well, let's just get on with the list then. So, number one, that ledge in the Great Hollow. That needs to change. Two, totally redo Isleth from the ground up, including changing the bed of chaos, who gives a shit about the lore? Just let us fucking fight the witch or a witch or witches of Isleth and just let them go nuts. Three, the Duke's archives were, they were alright, but the Crystal Cave is just fucking rubbish. Let's just redo that. Also, Sitha's garbage, redo him as well. Uh, the Catacombs, Tomb of the Giants, Neo, the Four Kings and New Londo, they're all fine, real. They're all, they're alright, they're fine. An obvious one, fix the backstabs. Dark Souls 3 has it perfect, really. This goes hand in hand with the connection issues, which is being confirmed to be fixed, apparently. 5. The Dark Souls 2 slash 3 password system so we can play with friends much easier. The benefits of getting to play with friends despite them being far, far higher level is definitely worth the downsides, just as being able to twink people is definitely worth the upsides of the flexibility and uh, the ease of use of the uh, matchmaking system. Number 6. Fix every bug, like dead angle, backstab chaining, reverse rolls, soul duping, moveset swapping, toggle escape, bad hitboxes, and all the rest of the shit along with it. Now, this should be obvious, but let's just add it to the list anyway, right? Number 7. Omnidirectional rolling. But to counter this, the enemies would probably need to track a little bit better, do a little bit more damage, etc, attack a little bit faster. However, I don't think the game should be the same speed as Dark Souls 3. Not for the player character anyway. Dark Souls 1 was nicely balanced in that respect, so by adding in the comfy rolling mechanics, the enemies would probably need to be a little bit buffed to counteract that without totally changing the feel of the game. You guys are sick of hearing me say it, and I'm sick of saying it, but you know, carry weight becoming its own stat. God, we can only hope they fucking do this, right? The game just change resistance to something uh, fucking usable, or just change resistance to make that the fucking carry weight stat. It'll just fix the fucking game, because, you know, humanity is also its own stat, apparently, and then that just kind of acts as luck, really, and that sort of works fine, do you know what I mean? You don't need a, you don't need to invest in a luck stat where you could just have weapons based around the humanity thing. But you know what I'm trying to say here, right? Just, just, uh, just get rid of resistance, please. Now, it's easy enough to say, balance the game so it's harder or easier, but instead of saying this big old blanket statement, I'd like to give specific examples of stuff that needs to be changed as part of this list. Hence, Pinwheel needs more HP and should split apart right away before you can hit the fucker. 
let's just assume that if I didn't mention anything specifically, then, you know, it's just assumed that it would be perfect in the game or whatever. You know, it's just a hypothetical fucking hell. I can't go over literally everything. Let's implement the Dark Souls 2 inventory. Dark Souls 3 was good as well, but Dark Souls 2 does steal it by being able to see your character at the side. Also, give us a button that lets us toggle armor on and off for previews without unequipping what we have on. This is something the game is needed for every single game because god that is so annoying having to scroll all the way up to put the thing that you had back on again. Now, this also includes a full rework of the UI. We want to be able to consume multiple souls, give multiple covenant items, you know, everything that- all that kind of shit. So, aye, any UI thing that I've missed, just assume that the UI is, like, as good as it can be. Now, on the note of covenants, let's make every covenant have an actual solid fucking purpose for online. As I've already said in another video, offline covenants don't actually make sense. It's, at that point, it is just an NPC quest. Covenant means online. We just need to accept that. And from this mindset, give us a solid, defined covenant with good progression and let us equip them like in Dark Souls 3 as well. The Dark Souls 1 system is just clunky as of fuck. Generally, you know, I like the methodical, lengthy process it takes to do things in Dark Souls 1. This is just one of those things that nobody liked and it really didn't add fucking anything to the game. So even if it means having actual less covenants, I would still rather a more focused experience with all the covenants that we have now, kind of more fleshed out with more kind of solidified rules for the invasions and stuff like that. Just, just what I'd prefer, I'd, I'd rather be a little less cryptic than what they are in Dark Souls 1. New enemy and item placements for the full game to give it a fresh feel, just like Scholar. Also, just as a little extra, make it so Mimics drop a random, non-special weapon with a random applied buff of the appropriate level for that point in the game. That would mean that pretty much every Mimic is going to give you something different. Personally, I really don't see why it matters, like, if you get a different weapon off a Mimic as long as it's like one of the kind of more basic weapons in the game. And as long as the buffs aren't overpowered at that point, then I don't see what's wrong with that. Just, it's like a, just a little extra thing. Let his map jump to stick. Please, at least give us the fucking option to do it. Faster ladder climbing. All classes just have an even amount of starting stats, and they all start at soul level 1. This is something that really fucking infuriated me about Dark Souls 1, actually. Why not make the classes, you know, balanced and, you know, off their equipment? rather than balanced off giving them fucking uneven starting stats, which means that the max level for one class is actually different from another class. It doesn't make it this so shit. The addition of a stat reallocation item slash NPC. Take the soul of Sindel's second form, and that's now Gwyn. Add in patrolling mobs. Now, someone said that you can't sprint while locked on in Dark Souls 1, and I don't know if this is true, but it should, oh, it should be a thing. I, I think it's a thing, but if it isn't, then it should be a thing. A popular point, but uh, you know, let's not have the game take you into New Game Plus straight away. This has to be the most easily implementable thing as well, surely. Um, not less, probably buff most bosses with a bit more HP, like, you know, 15 to 20%. I think that's a pretty good number for keeping things across the board a little harder, but not insane. So, lighting the bonfire should set it as your respawn target, not also needing to sit at it as well. That's what Super unnecessary. It's actually something that I had a problem with years ago as well. We should keep poise mechanically the same, but ultimately dial back the numbers a little bit so it's not fucking busted. I actually had the idea. This this could potentially work. I don't see why it couldn't. If we introduced more weight classes, so you'd have like fast roll, and then you have like a semi fast roll, then you have mid roll, and then semi mid roll. Each of those weight classes should have a poise limit. Maybe right. So. You can max out the poise and go over it, but it won't affect it. And then if you want more poise, then you just need to go up another weight class. For me, I feel like this kind of balances it out. It means that you can't have a fast roll giant dad with all that defense and all that poise, because in this case, you'd have the defense, sure, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the poise. So, I don't know, I think that could potentially work. Now there's definitely something relating to your overall carry weight that I'm missing here, like perhaps if you have lower carry weight then it means you can get more poise, I, I guess that sort of is the case, but if you have lower carry weight then it means that you surely you can wear heavy armour but it's going to put you in like a much much higher weight category, so I, I don't know, I think it could I think it could maybe work, and it, obviously the numbers need to be played with but ultimately it seems to be the best way for fix, um, well, it seems to be a way for fixing Dark Souls 1 poise anyway. 
We should be able to two-hand the left-handed weapon and also give it rolling and running attacks. Please, like, there's surely there's no way you can't do this. Surely, it's just reversing an animation, right? Add in Shiva and Oscar's quest lines. Bonfire aesthetics? Yes? No? Attack charging as well. Definitely attack charging. I think we all fucking liked attack charging. Now this could perhaps be controversial, but having an upgrade system more akin to Dark Souls 3 would really streamline the clunky upgrade system from Dark Souls 1. So, uh, now I, I mean combining the two anyway, so just replace all the coloured Titanite with just normal Titanite in terms of like, you know, drops and field finds, and then place gems in like well thought out locations. I'd say this is probably quite easy to balance overall. You could also make it so that the stages at which you're allowed to infuse your weapon are kept like in Dark Souls 1. So, you just don't need the specific Titanite, just the gem, but you'd still need a plus 10 weapon to use, like a fire gem, or, you know, give a boss soul or whatever. I think that kind of balances it out, and it makes it a lot less fucking, just a gigantic, colossal pain in the arse. Tell me what you think. Now, there needs to be some kind of fix so that weight brackets above 25% are usable. This has been a problem for all Souls games, and it's probably super hard to fix, but in a way, it would keep heavy armour from being really busted. Now, I think that introducing the poise limits actually does this because then it gives you an incentive to go to a higher weight category so you can get more poise to tank through attacks. So then you've got this balance between uh, being able to dodge attacks quickly or being able to just take a hit as opposed to the way it is now where you can just do both if you're smart enough with it, which really shouldn't be the case. So poise limits might literally be like the actual fix to this. Have a, have a fix, have I done it? Have I actually done it guys? Tell me. Come on, scrutinise this point in particular, please. Adding in dark damage for, you know, specifically the dark spells and pyros. So obviously you need dark defence now as well. Gesture cancelling, please. Four ring slots. Surely this would be an easy one. Dex also shouldn't do shit all to cast speed. Just default as to the fastest one. Please, for it doesn't matter. Just do it. Now, as much as I don't agree with uh, speeding the game up to Dark Souls 3 levels of speed, as then, you know, it kind of just encourages the use of R1 spam and fast attacks, the stagger animations for some weapons when you don't hit someone just shouldn't be there because it really, really disincentivizes using halberds. Like, and, and there's a few other weapons that have them as well. Hammers, I think. So yeah, just get rid of the stagger animations. They really do not need to be there. The addition of an item that allows a player to be invaded after a boss is defeated perhaps the dried finger. Another one relating to difficulty, at this stage, every other game aside from Bloodborne has cut your HP upon death. This would add an extra layer of difficulty if you got the 33% cut when hollow. I've spoken about this before, but I think it makes sense. A bonfire and new Londo as well. It doesn't add anything to the difficulty that there isn't one, and it simply makes the run tedious if you die anywhere in new Londo. So, a bonfire. Anywhere. Anywhere in there would be thankful. A any fucking anywhere! And, I suppose lastly, weapon arts? In saying that, this is one of those things that could easily break the balance of Dark Souls 1 if it was implemented. Still, it would be pretty nice to have, especially if it's the weapon arts is how I would have them in the game. Seriously, go watch my What Would The Perfect Dark Souls Game Be Like series. Come on, go watch it. Fucking watch it! So, I guess this brings me to the end of this list. I've been writing this list for like 5 days now, and I realised that I could technically go on forever, so I have to stop eventually. This seems to encapsulate pretty much all the main changes that everyone wants to see. Uh, at this point I'm getting so many repeated changes in all the lists that I'm looking at, so realistically I think it's, uh, now's a good time to stop. But the video doesn't end here. If this video reminded you of a change that isn't on the list that you'd like to add in, throw it down in the comments! And I would like to throw a big thank you to all the people who are supporting the channel on Patreon. I've been thinking of doing a Patreon reform recently, so I'll probably get around to that once I have the time. I've still not gotten around to the shirts, but don't worry, I've, you know, I'm still going to do it, I've not forgotten. But at this stage, I think I'm going to pay for a design, as I just cannot seem to perfect the design that I want myself, and it's driving me insane. But yeah, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.